group here is very abrasive towards the media. They have decided that the media is partly responsible for the rise of the right in this country. What would you do if Donald Trump showed up at the Trump? Murder him? Murder him for the people? If it came down to it and it was a group effort, we'd have to do him like Gaddafi. So for some reason, the media made a huge deal out of the Charlottesville anniversary. They really need those clicks, you guys. But even though by the Washington Post accounts that there are only about 30 white nationalists or neo-Nazis there, Antifa did have to show up in droves and try to find something to fight. This begs the question as to why they're giving wall-to-wall -wall national coverage to about 30 of these losers. Of course, since there was no opposition for Antifa, they had to find somebody to fight, whether it was journalists or police, or anybody else that just wanted to stand there and see what was going on. Now let's be real for a moment, as lame and as crazy and stupid as white nationalists are and neo-Nazis, 99% of the time it's the communist Antifa and the like who are starting the violence and causing trouble. They have done actually a decent job of disguising their violence and rhetoric though, haven't they? So props to that, I guess. Like I mentioned, they mainly found themselves getting into scuffles with police as well as making threats about the president, for which the Secret Service is now looking into these cases, so probably not a good idea to make death threats against your government on camera, which is actually illegal. Fucking murder. I mean, yo, he's America's Caesar except he's a dickhead. So, you gotta take him down. You gotta take Fuck him down. Trump! Fuck Trump! There we go. If it came down to it and it was a group effort, we'd have to do him like Gaddafi. Like Gaddafi? Yeah. What would you do if Donald Trump showed up? Yeah, no, I might wild out. I'm You'd wild, wild out? out? Yeah. Yeah? I would fuck with him. He's yeah. fucked up. You'd fuck him up? Yeah. To be honest, right. if I get a tattoo, I, I would do that. What's that? If I get a tattoo, fuck him up, I would. Chance to fuck him up? You would. Yeah. yeah. Looks like you <laughs> looks like you you got a system right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, you better stay uh, stick uh, away. Uh, uh, if the president showed up this March, what would you do, sir? Beat his ass. Beat his ass? Uh, if Trump showed up today, what would you do, sir? I'd throw the fucking bell at him. You'd throw a bell at him? Yeah, why not? All right, what would you say? Tell him to fuck off. <laughs> All right, what, what's that shirt say? Trump is a jag off, bitch. Yeah, yeah, I'd piss on his leg. Insane. What's that? I'd piss on his leg. NBC even was willing to call it theatrics when they were reporting live from the rally because on one side you had police escorting Antifa to wherever they were going to go, and on the other side you had police coming in, pushing them into that direction. So really they were just standing in between two groups of police pretending to form walls and do all this stuff for the cameras when really they're basically just very expensive babysitters uh, watching these LARPers. Yeah, not only are they headed towards each other, this group, come on with me, Randy, I know we're going to move sort of quickly here. This group is sort of being led by one group of police officers. So while they're chanting these anti-police slogans, they're being escorted around the city by police on both sides. A lot of this, frankly, is theater. You will see them form this line, and as we get closer, you'll see them kind of start... Uh, being a little bit irate towards us, but a lot of this is theater, a lot of this is this Antifa sort of um, narrative that the police, again, are responsible for a lot of what we've seen, not just in Charlottesville, but around the country. That is something that I had not seen before, mm. the ire towards the media, but it is something that is developing quickly here on the ground. I ask you, for fairness sake, what would media reactions be like if there were people on camera making death threats to Justin Trudeau or Barack Obama? I don't think it would be the same way. But Andrew, they aren't hateful like him. <laughs> Shut up! While in Canada we do have similar voices from far left activists, they were able to get British Columbia to take down a statue of our very first Prime Minister, if you can believe that. Good job. This is a huge victory, you guys. This time it's the Prime Minister. Next time maybe we can, we can get them to take down those racist Seinfeld episodes. At this point, I think I figured out where Antifa came from, where this lot of people uh, rose up from the ground from. I just think it's the new alt wannabe edgy emo kid thing to do, really. Being a communist and anti-fascist is the new way for people to pretend that they're not conforming to the rest of society. Conformist. Yeah. yeah. And I would say that most people agree. Whenever I show a video of Antifa doing stuff to people, wherever they are in the world, frankly, I pretty much get the same reaction. 
they kind of look like losers. <laughs> Personally, I miss and relish in the days of years such as 2012, when our social outliers acted more like this. Or even this in 2009. I can't, I can literally just sit here and watch this. Despite the fact that I didn't realize how much choreographed dancing there was in uh... <laughs> Despite the fact I didn't realize how much chore choreographed dancing there was involved in these groups of people, I would 100% rather hang out with emos, goths, or fans of Slavic hard bass rather than Antifa types. They've just, they've just lost it. They've gone too far. So what's my point? These are misled youths being led around by communists and activist leaders into something that they don't know much about. And why are they doing this? To feel included. You can see that whenever they kind of get hit or get into a violent scuffle, they're like, whoa, shit, I didn't really actually want to do this. I didn't really want to do the violent part, unless it's like 10 on 1. Most of the time, ironically, they do call for police help whenever they face trouble. And my point is, these people can still be convinced, they can still be led in a better direction for their life. They crave attention, and they're simply going to the shortest avenue where they can get the most attention with the least amount of effort. I would say, however, that they need to be debated, uh, maybe throw some pity their way, don't actually just hate them. I mean, they're looking for love, but you still gotta keep an eye out on them, because the people behind them funding them are looking for power and they're trying to gain power and like I said they've got a lot of money they've got a lot of funds coming in their way they're not making these fancy signs by themselves let me tell you one thing you can't do though is try to silence them for a couple reasons the first being that makes you like them they claim everybody else is fascist but they're the ones who do fascist type things the second thing is silencing dissenting opinions is never a good idea look what happened with Alex Jones 5.6 million new subscribers in 48 hours you sure showed him. Now if only we could get Alex Jones to learn some of those jump dancing moves, I think we'd have a hundred million views on that. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and consider becoming one of my patrons in the link below, or else there's gonna be more Alex Jones dancing.